Hi guys, my name is Rachel. Um, this is the first video that I've made and put onto YouTube. Um, just wanted to do some mixed media stuff with you. So this is my homemade jelly plate. It's getting quite raggedy. This is the fifth remelt that I've done through the microwave. It was made with Lindsay the Frugal Crafter's recipe, but I added an extra leaf of gelatin. And it's just gotten a bit dirty and the dirt's starting to float to the top so I'm not getting as smooth a surface as I'd like. But I wanted to show you some of the texture tools because a lot of the videos I'm seeing at the moment on YouTube with jelly plates are people using a series of $20 stencils that they've had to buy over and over and over again on top of each other. So I wanted to show you some cheap alternatives of ways to get texture and stenciling into your jelly print. This is it from BW. It's actually a lint roller and it originally had this jelly stuff on it and I tore it all off. Just completely ripped it all off and it's nice and smooth now. You can see that. And then this was originally for combing pet hair out of something but it makes such a nice texture tool that I just love it. So I'll just show you that now. So it gives sort of this distressed pattern. And then you can just poke it as well and leave some nice dots. And then you've got the other side is your brayer. It does leave lines and it's not quite as nice as maybe having a big rubber brayer but they're 40 bucks a pop around here so in case you haven't noticed I'm Australian and it turns out it's an expensive place to live all right so we've got some not so smooth paint application over here another contrasting color in quickly there we go might actually make a decent print afterwards as well. As always, don't just roll back and forth, lift and push. My first thing that I like to use is actually a piece of styrofoam. So, not exactly expensive, piece of packaging. And if you look, you can see that it's actually got like a bubble texture already on it. And that comes nicely off on our plate. Comes off a bit nicer if you've got a bit more paint. What I might do, do that is just spray this a bit. It's just water. Now let's try. Okay, so that's the styrofoam standard packaging. Works best when it's new. After it's been pressed a couple of times, it's sort of goes flat but it's so cheap you don't need to worry about that you can just grab another piece and rip it off spatulas I've seen them used before you can get a whole bunch of different ones with different patterns in them so there's circles and then this sort of fan shape that's useful uh, fiberglass tape is sort of a webbing tape and that leaves a really nice texture I'll probably use this in a later video where I'll show you how to make roses on your jelly plate but I am going to make a new jelly plate before I do that. Um, if you like playing board games, and me and my friends certainly do, when you buy a new board game it comes with all these little tokens and everything in chipboard. And you don't want to use the tokens themselves because they're for your game but the thing that they were in that you've gone and punched everything out of, it makes a really good stencil and a stamp. So we'll have a go with that. Again, I think I probably need some more paint on here. So, back in a sec when I've done that. Okay, so have a look now that I've got my extra paint on there at what this brings out. That did leave a texture at the time. The other things that I like to use, a bit of lace. This one's actually really gorgeous colours from having been used so much. I'm hoping I don't turn it to mud eventually. As you can see, my jelly plate does need redoing. There's a little bubble there. And some muck over there as well. 
but this one's just for demoing some tools to give you some ideas. So that's put a nice lace on it, and you can print with the other side of that on a piece of paper. Um, this is technically a stencil, but it's actually for a coffee cup. So when you get fancy patterns on the top of your cappuccino and it's all done in cocoa, this is what they use. They're they come in packs of three from cheap shops. You can also get them in cake decorating places and stuff, but they're a bit more expensive there. And I can use it as a stencil. I can use it to press. It, it's just a good thing to have. Um, paper doilies. I've seen these done before or talked about being done. And you can either stencil through them or just press them in. And because they're paper, you know, it doesn't you don't have to clean them up. You can even reuse them on an art journal page if you want to. Now, ah, this one is a bit of a funny one. Um, this is from a Webster pack used for medications by pharmacists. And I can use it as a disposable palette. Or, for turn it over, I can use that to print. What else have we got? The commonly used non-slip mat. Nice grid pattern. You can get ones in different patterns as well. It's a nice cheap way to do it. Bubble wrap. I'm not going to use that today. I don't really... I'm not a fan of it that much, to be honest. It's good when you're going through a stencil. This is a net from a thing of mandarins. I've not tried it yet, obviously. But we'll give it a go, just while we're here. Not really feeling it. You can probably hear my mum on her phone in the background. Hopefully not well enough to hear what she's talking about. She'd hate that. This is a piece of some sort of plumbing apparatus. It might have been from a tap or, I don't know, part of a toilet. But it's just a nice little sort of flowery shaped thing. I don't like, I like it. Um, a couple of the other things that I use. Real string. Go straight across with it. Or cut off some skin, string and lay it there. I like the pattern that it gives, um, but it's something that's quite subtle in comparison with the others, so using it last was probably not the best idea. Um, this is the top of a salt and pepper shaker, and it, it gives a nice stencil or sort of a stamp as well. Another one that's really good is, and you may have heard of this art supply, so there are drawing pens called Artline Sticks by Artline, and they're done for kids, and they come in this triangular sort of thing, and they work a bit like the Faber-Castell connector pens, and they all join together, but they have this awesome texture on the sides. One side sort of circles, and it looks a bit like tentacles from uh, an octopus, and in the other side's the dots. And they're just great. And then on top of that, you've got a nice sort of triangular stamp. Join three of these together, they form a half circle. And you can stamp a flower with it. I love doing that. And it's a stamp no one else will have. So I'll just do it with one here quickly. Not nice and neat, but I will And then use the side like that. I don't know how well you're catching this anymore because there's so much texture going on. Um, two more things. This is a chopstick from the Raffles Hotel in Singapore that I just found in a bunch of kitchen stuff at the rubbish tip. We have a recycling sort of thing for homewares and that sort of stuff at the rubbish tip which reclaims anything that they think is usable. Um, really good resource, but this one, when I found it, I just had to have it because it had this, like, I don't know if it's flour or a cabbage or 
something and it looks kind of like a fan or a piece of coral. But it just makes such a lovely stamp. And then my final favourite, and I'm hoping my texture plate, because it's looking a bit raggedy, will hold up to it, is this, which I also found at the rubbish tip. Now this was part of one of those electric milk frothers, where you hold the thing up here, and it spins this around really fast like a whisk. Um, but it had obviously broken, so I just attached it. And you can get about three different sort of types of texture out of this. You can just roll it across your line like that, which works if there's a lot of paint around. So over here, you might be able to see that one. You can just stamp with it to make little sort of daisies. Or my favourite thing to do with this is actually to just put it in and twirl it. And you get this sort of rippled effect. It looks a lot better when you've got two colours going on and all that. So those are my texture tools. I'll just take a print of this and show it to you guys. Take it now. I'll give you guys a quick look on the camera. But I'd love to hear about your ideas for what you use sort of to recycle and make shift texture. If you, how well you can see that guys. I'm just paying across. So that's print one. And then I'll just take print two with a scrap. And I'll see you next time. with a new jelly plate.